Welcome back to the 52 Weeks to Wealth. My name is Gualter Morello, the real estate mentor. We've been traveling through the 52 weeks for 26 weeks. Wealth principle 26 is a long principle. This one was combined with two, and it goes like this. Study the businesses and people who are operating the way you want your business to operate. Hands to the camera if you are a business owner, business owner who'd like to make more money this year, who would like to do less work while building more business, more income. Awesome. What are you thinking? Don't you know we're in the middle of a recession? Everybody's supposed to be broke right now. Everybody's supposed to be losing their shirts right now, but not us, not us. In Alchemist Nation, we are focused on doubling our income and doubling our net worth and doing it with less work. And one of the easiest ways to do that is to watch people who are already doing it in your business, in your market, in your industry, and identifying what is it they're doing that is leveraging them? What is it they're doing that is moving them forward in the direction that you'd like to go to? Hanson Cam, if you could think of one person you'd like to model or follow, somebody who's got a business that you would like to emulate. Awesome. So usually we do action steps. We do an exercise so you can implement this wealth principle each week because each week there's another wealth principle. There are 52. We don't make them up again after this. After we go through the entire year, we start over. Even though there's a wealth principle every week, it is a systematic process to doubling your net worth, doubling your income. So what we're talking about this week must be implemented this week. Last week, well, principle 25 was the power of outsourcing. We implemented outsourcing systems, outsourcing people, outsourcing ideas and strategies so that other things, people, time can do the work for us. Other people's money was another outsourced system that we leveraged. Hands to the camera, if you've been here more than one year, this is not your first season. This is round two or round three. Hands to the camera, if this is more than your third year, second year. Hands to the camera, if you're in your third year with us, this is your third year running with the wealth principles. Give yourselves a round of applause. You may ask, why is it that people are here two, three years into this? Well, most of the people in year three are millionaires at this point or very, very close. It takes three to five years to become a millionaire. And they are on this journey. Some of them are giving back and contributing. Some of them have become mentors. Some of them have become coaches. So this community is built in a powerful way so that not only are we gaining this great knowledge, but it gives us a way, by the way, teach what you want more of. It gives us a way to expand our own personal knowledge by being able to teach and pay it forward. And it puts a lot of good out into the universe. Who's heard the saying, you can get anything you want if you help enough people get what they want. Here's the case you've heard that. I see you're really lighting up the room now. <laughs> yes, it's Zig Ziglar. And he's right. But today we're going to talk about something super important. You got to help people who have what you want, help them get what they want. If you want the things that you want. And it's if you'd like more money. We, we said it earlier. That's what the 50 weeks of wealth is designed to do. So people who have more money have an ability to give you more money. People who have no money. And I'm talking about people with absolutely no money. They do not have the ability to hand you money. So when you say, I'm going to serve the poor, you had better be a doctor because you can use insurance, or you better be a college because you can use Fannie Mae to give them loans. And it's care if that makes sense. If you're looking to get rich, serving the poor is not how you do it. If you're looking to get rich in spirit, serving the poor is how you do that. Does that make sense? Hence, care if we're getting it, right? A lot of different ways to do it, which is why... Alchemist Nation, we do serve the poor. Our courses cost absolutely nothing. They are free for somebody to go on and get access to the knowledge. In the, our mentorship, we charge $1,000. In our masterminds, it's $5,000. In our mastery program, it's $25,000. Those are for people who are leveling up. Does that make sense? Right? In your business, you're going to have different levels. Do make sure that you have something where you're giving back. Absolutely. Have a charity. Have something where you're doing something for free. I know a lot of restaurants will, will feed the homeless with food that they had left over. Do something in your business to make sure you're paying it for and giving it back. I said recession. I said we're recession proof. There's a recession proof challenge that starts on Monday. Uh, so epic. Be there. Recession proof challenge. Many of you are already in. It's a 30 day starting on August 1st. It's a recession proof challenge. It's a challenge. So that means we are going in live daily together tackling some uh, projects and tasks and activities to get you recession proof by building your network 100 people that you can surround yourself with and do business with and loan the money work together and then you can also learn how to invest in what are the recession proof assets right what are they and on top of everything you get two tickets to the summit so that's no brainer to me
every single person on this call must be joining because we are only rising to the top together and we can absolutely crush it and get get strong in this recession and do it together and we're a community i'm so excited let's give the a round of applause can you believe she was ever scared of public speaking at some point she does absolutely amazing on the camera i'm still okay but thank you all right go live on instagram live on facebook live on tiktok and let's share the screen right now this is Wealth Principle 26. Study the businesses and people who are operating the way you want your business to operate. There are four reasons why you should be studying your competition. And those four reasons are your competitor research guides uh, gives you better understanding of customer expectations. So who here thinks that their customers love them no matter what they do? Is anybody in that kind of delusion? I kind of do. Sometimes I think like no matter what I do, Alchemist Station's like, cool, he made more money. It's, it's okay if he went and did... You know, now I have a CRM. We have Alchemist Connect. Does it seem like it's in line with what we're doing? Not until you realize everybody needs a CRM. Hands can if you have a CRM or some way to manage your database. Excellent. Hands can if you know you need one and you really wish you had set one up by now and it was already automatically following up with people. There's reasons that we do things, but make sure that the things you're doing are reaching your customers' expectations. When I'm when I'm speaking, when I'm building my business, and when you're building your business. I'm focused on building millionaires, 100 millionaires who are inspired to build 100 millionaires. Who's heard this before? You guys clear on what I do and why I do it? Excellent. So are your customers' goals what you're seeking to do? See, my customers' goals, which is every one of you on this call, wants to be a millionaire or more. I get more, more response from that one question than any other question that, that I'll ask. It's because your mission is my mission, right? I ask, what are you looking for? Well, I'd like to be financially free. I would like to be able to quit my job. I'd like to make $10,000 passive income per month. I would like to be a million. I'd like to be an accredited investor and get access to deals that nobody else gets access to so I can make even more money. And so I leveled that up and I said, if you were a millionaire, you'd have all of those. Hands care if that's true. Millionaires already know. You could, you could do all of it. Excellent. So the next one, Four reasons why you should be studying your competition. The next one is your competitor research gives you a better insight about your flaws, not your client's flaws. By the way, the client is perfect. There is nothing ever wrong with the client. You've heard the customer is always right. They may not right, be right about the system, but they're right about how they feel about what's going on. So your customer is always right. And this research allows you to recognize your flaws. When we were doing something with Alchemist Station a while back, we were doing one of our events and the event was called Mission of Millions. And we were all in this house together. But the event cost $3,000 for the individual to go to. Mike's got the shirt, Mission of Millions, hell yeah. And that event cost people too much money to get to. We did have an amazing group and we recognized we had a really powerful group. There was 18 of us there, but we missed a lot of our community by not making it affordable enough for them to get there. Hands to the camera if you recognize that can be a flaw. That can be a mistake in your business. So we've actually, not just because of the recession, but because we've been getting data and feedback, we've reduced the price of generator business boot camp, which was also a $3,000 product and program. And we moved it from Orlando where, you know, I like to be, I like to do deals. I'm, I'm building my community down here. We moved it back to where the main community is in Rhode Island, Massachusetts, right? So that more people get access to it. And we also made the price $250 so that anybody not this is not just for you to come this is so you can bring somebody this is so you can tell somebody about another business owner or another entrepreneur and bring them in otherwise if you try to tell somebody hey come to this event with me and they look at the price and it's three thousand dollars they had better be sleeping with you that's the only thing i could say so we had to make a change <laughs> something had to be done so that the barrier to entry is much much smaller in fact when i was starting out as a real estate agent one of my brokers, she told me, she said, you have to take your clients to bed. And I think that was because the, the barrier to entry was so big the way we used to operate as real estate agents. Now, the way I operate, it's so easy to work with us because, well, if you don't have the money, don't worry. You could do seller financing. You could do subject to existing mortgages. You could do a little creative finance. We can get a co-signer. We could do a lot of, we could do private money, but there's a lot of different ways we can get you into the loan or into the house. Before, all they gave me was uh, if they're pre-approved, that's it. So you had to build such a deep, deep, deep relationship for somebody to close with you. For me, I, I just identified all the flaws and I said, well, people want to buy. Let's not make money an issue. One more reason to study your competitors. By the way, there is no competition. We're just using that word as a tool. Competitor research allows you to improve your USP. If you don't know what a USP is, it stands for Unique Selling Proposition. This is also known as your elevator pitch, or as I refer to it, your 60-30 seconds. 
your sexy 30 seconds. So you get into a conversation. People ask me, what do I do? I say, I build millionaires. They say, what the heck does that mean? I say, well, I teach or I invest with people who have potential to become a millionaire. And now that opens up their mind and says, well, do I have potential? I say, yes, you can go to your millionairepath.com and take the six questions, you know, take the quiz. If it works out, you get a report. Either way, you're going to identify how soon you'll be a millionaire. And I get notified of that report and I can reach out to you if I so choose, if I see you're on the path. Hands to the camera, if that makes sense. It's a quick statement. I could have just said, I build millionaires and they would have walked away, right? Qualifier. In fact, I was in an airport. Woman saw this shirt on. She said, hundred millionaires. What's that mean? I was like, well, you know, all my friends are millionaires. So <laughs> I said, I build millionaires. She's like, what do you do? I said, I build millionaires. And she's like, oh, okay. And she walked right away because whatever that brought up for her, was uncomfortable. And for the right person, it brings them in. So your USP should be polarizing. And your competitors probably have a USP, right? Look at Nike, not my competitor. I have no competitors, but I do have people I can study from. Look at, look at Grant Cardone. His USP is you're going to 10x your life, right? 10x. That's a pretty powerful USP. When we built the 100 millionaires, we said, hey, like we need a number in that, right? There needs to be some sort of number because numbers are really sexy. Without Grant saying 10X, I don't think it would have, I would have just been, I build millionaires instead of 100 millionaires. Hands to camera, if you see the the way you can leverage your competitors, you can learn from them. Awesome. I see Greg's got the shirt on too, man. 100 Millionaire Summit coming up October 21st. Hell yeah. Next up, this is the fourth reason you should be studying your competition. You can learn from the success and failures of your competitors. Who's seen one of their competitors do an epic fail? Epic, like, whoa, I can't believe you, you actually did that out in public. Anybody? And we've seen one of the competitors make an epic fail. I have. Oh my God, I have. I've watched real estate investors go belly up. I've seen real estate investors overdo their renovations, pay too much for properties. I've seen realtors market things to the wrong market. I've seen, I've seen coaches say the wrong thing on stage to kill a sale or kill somebody from moving forward just because in the moment something wasn't right hence the camera if you can learn a lot from the failures and successes of your competition absolutely i love watching people speak i love watching i go to other people's webinars i watch i go through their funnels i go and i read see their online programs when when i see a competitor i think is doing really well i'll jump into their funnel we call this funnel hacking right russell brunson coined the phrase i'll jump into their funnel and i'll just see like where does this lead where does this go what's next and the reason i do that is because they might have something i want in fact Here's something you should do right now, actionable step. Go to any one of your competitor's websites, click on the thing that says get information, put in your information and submit. And very soon you're gonna start getting emails and maybe even texts if they're if they're sophisticated, they're gonna be sending you texts and it's a lot smarter. But you're gonna be getting emails and texts from them from now on. You should copy those. They could be useful for you to send to your clients. Does that make sense? We're grasping this. Real estate investors jump into somebody's real estate funnel, especially if they're a player in your market. I bet you their their value add email is 10 times better than what you got right now, which by the way is probably nothing. Hence care if you're not sending out a value add email. Yeah. Most people don't send something out, and that is the problem. Awesome. Are we getting value out of this so far? We're having some fun? Excellent. We're going to dive into the seven steps, how to model other people's businesses. How to, not why, but how to. Hands to camera if you know it's who, not how, right? We're about to go who all over this. Excellent. Share screen. We're going back in. So seven steps to understanding your competitors. Step one, speak to your customers. You must speak to them. If you're not communicating to your people, to your people you serve or you seek to serve, you're going to miss out on what's going on in their world. Who here has had a conversation with myself or one of my Millionaire Path consultants in the last 60 days? Hands the camera if you've had a conversation with me, Amy, Darina, Derek. Awesome. Excellent. That is a way for me to stay. Are we relevant? Are we still working? Are we still getting things going? Next, speak to your suppliers. So some of, for me in this business, my suppliers are other coaches, influencers, speakers, people who have programs that they could, you know, we could work together on our programs. For real estate investors, your suppliers are your sellers. It's the people who provide the homes. It's, it could be real estate agents. It could be wholesalers. So be speaking to those people who are giving you the access to the insight. Speak to your competitors. I hang out with coaches. Man, like, isn't that insane? Like, why would you hang out with people who would never pay you any money? Because they got a lot of ideas. They're smart people. They're in different markets. I hang out with real estate investors. But when I first started teaching real estate investing, my mentor said, why are you teaching the competition? He said, this is insane. You're teaching these other people to compete with you. And I, I remember laughing. I'm very calm when I talk to my mentor and when I talk to people who are way above me. And I just, you know, smile and I said, I can see that, you know, the very Dale Carnegie, right? Allow them to keep face. And I said, the other side of it is, well, I see 
every person I train as my replacement because I don't intend to do anything that I'm doing forever. I only learn, I do, and then I delegate or teach or automate or pass on to somebody else. So everything I'm doing is temporary. At some point, I'd like somebody to take my position in any role that you ever see me playing. And he said, I, I never thought of it that way. Very interesting way to look at it. It was the same when I was training real estate agents, right? I wasn't looking to build my competition. I didn't care. In fact, most every real estate agent I ever trained has now worked for somebody else after I trained them. And most of them are top agents in their markets because of the training they received from, from me in those times. I don't operate as a real estate agent, so I'm not competing with them. But they do send me referrals because I still have my license. Does that make sense? So teach, speak to your competitors. There's no shame in it. Next, go to industry seminars and conferences and expos. One of my favorite. This has been one of my high leverage tools. I traveled 2017, 18, 19. I had a big plan, but you know, 19 fell apart. But 2017 and 18, I traveled the entire country all over. Almost every state I jumped into any time there was a big convention, a big seminar, a big expo. The more people in the room, the more likely I was going to be there because I was learning from the best in the industry. I wanted to be a speaker, so I was learning from speakers. I wanted to be a better real estate investor, so I was learning from real estate investors. I wanted to be a better digital marketer, so I was learning from digital marketers. I wanted to be a better salesperson, so I went into the salespeople trainings. And guess what? Every room that I was in was my competition. Everybody who wanted to do what I was doing better than they were doing that day. So I was learning from them. I was gaining relationships. And as I've continued to grow my business, some of those people have become partners. Some of them become strategic partners. Some of them become allies, referral partners. Hands can't for catching this. We can do this. Yes. Excellent. Next, conduct online research. In this day and age, you don't have an excuse not to have answers. All you have is opportunity to grab something, go and find out what's happening. Go and find out what your customers want. Go and find out what your competitors are doing that is freaking awesome. Check social media, right? What are they doing, right? Who here knows that they should be more active on their social media? Anybody? Am I the only one who's, you know, sometimes feels guilty that I didn't make a post? So if we know we should be active, who's done a bomb post, a post that has just gone absolutely nowhere, put a video out or put a message out and it went nowhere. Like nobody saw it. And me too. <laughs> I do a lot of those. And you don't see them. So by the way, if you watch my social media, which follow me, go check any one of them. I am copying things that I've seen other people do. I've seen them do it very well. And I'm taking that and I'm I'm taking ownership of it. And I'm putting it out there. I put my twist on. I put my special. It's my sauce. You know, it's Alchemist Nation. It's building millionaires. I, I put my own thing on it. But I'm using what's worked for other people because the chances are if it worked for somebody else, It'll work for me. And I think I said this to Jen Sullivan uh, yesterday or the day before. She and I were talking about good artists copy, the best artists steal, great artists steal. And so I love, by the way, in school, when you were growing up, you were raised not to cheat. You were raised not to steal. You were raised to be unique and special. And in everything that you do, what I will tell you is people don't like unique or special or people who do things new. They like what they like, what they love, what they've seen before, and they want it again. Don't change your model, please. All right? I go to listen to a band live. That band had better hit every freaking note they hit on the recorded album. Right? And when I listen to that recorded album, it better sound like exactly what they showed me in the first place on the radio. They better say it that when... When I come to your business, I'm expecting it to be exactly like it was last time. When I come to the conversation with you, and I, I know each one of you personally. So when I have a high five with you or I'm having a conversation with you, I expect you to be the same person you were last time, right? Now, obviously, if how you're thinking, how you're operating has changed, I expect that too. We're, we're Alchemist Nation. We're designed to grow. Each one of us is moving up and leveling up. And if you have new friends, new relationships, I expect that too. Because get rid of those broke friends, right? We're encouraging you to move forward and grab the right people around you. Forget those people who want to bring you down. I expect you to have eliminated a few people by the time I see you next time. Answer can if that makes sense. We have standards for ourselves. People can change. Too. They're allowed to. But not everybody will. And we expect that too. Uh, last one. Watch who your compet uh, competitors hire. Watch who they choose to be in their company in their community. I know that when other coaches, speakers, trainers come into Alchemist Station, you see them on the 52 weeks, they're looking around saying, damn, every one of these people is doing things morally, ethically, legally. Every one of these people's got their cameras on. What is like, why do I play Zooms and no, nobody's got their cameras on? Every one of these people, like when he puts his hand up to the camera, their hands are going up to the camera. Right. Look at their shirts. Right. They're wearing Mission of Millions. They're wearing Hundred Millionaires. Yeah. <laughs> wearing names on deeds. Right. There's there's shirts 
that are brand centric to what this community does that they are wearing, man, you know, when, when other coaches come in here, they're learning, they're seeing how to build their communities on a better level. Hence, Karen, if it's okay that we're, we're showing other people how to operate better, how to teach more people, how to build more millionaires. Awesome. I love this. I, this, this is one of my favorite lessons because it's what I do every day. I'm always, always, I'm addicted to studying people who are doing things really well. And one thing that I've seen do be done really well is these challenges. And I've seen challenges change people's lives. I've joined challenges. In fact, who's ever heard of the 75 hard challenge? Have you ever heard of 75 hard? Man, Darina, when we first started dating, was doing 75 hard. This could be why we started dating, right? It involves reading a book uh, 10 minutes a day. It involves going to the gym 45 minutes. It involves eating clean. There's a lot of like really like mind-centered things. It involves meditation. So she was for 75 days really just sharpening the axe, sharpening the saw, getting herself into this state where she could level herself up, get to the next level. Because it was a challenge, because she knew other people were doing it with her. Who knows that online courses aren't always effective, especially the richer you get. The more money you make, the less you want to do an online course. Is that true? Like just record it online, like, hey, watch the video at your own leisure. The more money you make, the more you want to be involved with other people. The more relationships are important to you. The more you, you want to be around a group. You want to be around a room because you know, all the money you want is in the hands of other people. All the things you want are in the hands of other people. So you, as you level up in life, you start looking at people. When you're broke, you're like, I don't want to spend any time with any people. Right? Like I remember being broke. Like I was hiding away from everybody. Broke people are selfish. Broke people are lonely. And broke people deserve absolutely nothing because they haven't put enough into other people's lives to get anything. And so Karen, if you've been guilty of that at some point, you know, being a little selfish, being a little reclusive. Yeah. Hey, we all get there. You know, every time before I jump on a call, not this call. I love the 52 weeks, but some of the other calls that I have to do, every I get to do to serve. Anytime I jump on a podcast or a call right before, I think I don't want to do it. Yeah, I would really rather just read a book right now or talk to somebody in the community right now or maybe relax. Maybe just watch, you know, Avengers on Netflix again, you know, for the third time. There's a lot of things that I could do that would be fun. But every time I show up, I serve more, more money flows in, more people flow in. And by the way, the best currency I can give you as a community is more people more relationships, more opportunities with high net worth individuals, with people who have access to deals. And so I know that. So I'm, I'm aware of it. This challenge that we've built is designed to give you 100, 100 key relationships for the following things. Who here is looking to raise more capital this year, wants to buy a deal, it could use $100,000, a $1 million, $2 million. Hence, Karen, if you could use extra money for your deals. Excellent. So then for you, the Recession Proof Challenge is focused on 100 private lenders, people who can hand you money with either promissory notes or second mortgages on a property, or they could carry a full note on your mortgage. So 100 relationships who have the potential, who have the net worth. We're talking accredited investors. Hands to the camera, that same group. Hands to the camera, if you would like 100 accredited investors in your network, if that would potentially be a game changer. Awesome, excellent. So for our Raising Private Capital group in the Recession Proof Challenge, that's what we'll be focusing on. In fact, I'll be doing that one myself. Then there's the group of I need more deals. Who doesn't care about the money right now? They just want more properties in their pocket because they could raise the money with properties. Excellent. So we're gonna be building 100 relationships that will send you deals. We're talking about an unlimited deal flow that you're gonna have to get somebody else to manage your email box because so many deals will be flowing to you. 100 relationships sending you deals in your market, in your buy box. 30 day challenge. Hands again if you have a service, you'd like more clients paying you for your service. Awesome, excellent. And I'm not talking like normal clients, I'm talking ideal clients, like, like your hyper buyers, the ones who buy all the things that you got to sell. Awesome. This is the one, and by the way, in this challenge, you're going to see a lot of millionaires in the challenge with you. You're going to see a lot of coaches in the challenge with you. You're going to see people who speak on stage in the challenge with you because I've, I've been saying that to them. I've been saying who wants more students and they've been, yep, sign me up, 30 day challenge because they know the answers. They know how to do it. They want the community around them. They want other people in it with them to do the things that they don't like to do. This is, by the way, like Terry said earlier, these are organizational tasks. These are routines. These are systems that we're going to implement that over 30 days are going to put those people into your database. I'm going to teach you how to build automated follow-ups and I'm going to build them with you. We're talking about one-on-one, one-on-group. -on -one. One -on <laughs> I will be there building with you these workflows 
these landing pages and these this database, we're going to use Alchemist Connect because, well, it's got all the tools that it needs to in order to build a follow-up that automatically brings people through. And this recession-proof challenge starts, by the way, the key to being recession-proof, 100 people who will pay you what you ask for. 100 people who you can raise capital from or 100 people who can bring you the deals that you're looking for. Try any other any other person who's like, oh, well, landlording is recession-proof. Not if you're over-leveraged. It's a, not if you bought wrong. Flipping is recession-proof. Not in a down market. Well, you could if you got to, if you buy cheap enough and you get cheap enough labor, you could potentially. Some people will do well in flipping. Real estate agents, recession-proof. Not if you don't know how to shift with the market. Not if you're not serving investors. If, you, if you're just working with retail buyers, you're going to watch, in fact, in the next 90 days, you're going to see a lot of real estate agents never do a transaction again. Of course, you won't know until a year or two from now. But in the next nine days, you're going to see a lot of realtors. Well, you won't see them, but they'll be handing out over their licenses, giving them up, just saying, I'm not renewing it. No point. And it's kind of, you know, this is a cyclical thing. It happens in recessions. Realtors stop. They give up. We're going to build a community that is recession proof by building a community around each one of you. Imagine 100 people who love you, like you, trust you, and want to do deals with you. That's what the recession proof challenge is. And it's 30 days. I will be there with you every single day. It's a commitment from me. And for you, you may say, I don't know if I have that time. I don't have that time. I am making that time for you. I don't want to do it. I The worst thing in my life is to add something that is consistent for 30 days, but I am doing it for you because I know it's the right thing to do to make this community recession proof and to show our leaders in the community how to build community, to show the, the mentors and the coaches who are watching us, all of our competitors who are watching us, show them how to do it the right way, how to be ethical in their dealings. You know how many coaches, when I say build 100 millionaires, like their heart it gets on fire. They're like, oh my God, I never considered doing that. I know I've done it. I know I've helped a lot of people, but this makes it tangible. This is something that is real. It's so powerful to have this conversation with, a, with somebody who's been building millionaires, like you know, on the back end. But then there are people who I ask, hey, you know, have you tracked your success of your students? No, I don't actually know how many millionaires I've built. I don't, I mean, I know there's a lot and they seem to be okay with that, but I'm not okay with it. I feel like you have to know. And so we've created a way in Alchemist Nation now where if you're a millionaire, just shoot me a text and ask me for the millionaire checkbox, millionaire verification. You can now get an Alchemist Nation, be verified as a millionaire. Hand scanner, if that's cool, you can go on AN and know the only person who can verify is me. <laughs> <laughs> there is a true barrier to entry. You have to send me information so that I know for sure. If you're somebody I've already verified, just shoot me a text and I'll, I'll make sure we get updated. This challenge starts August 1st. We're getting ramped up to go. It is designed so you're going to be putting in 100 people into your network. It is challenge at alchemistnation.com. Don't wait, like register now. Just go click register because it will help me feel more inspired about teaching it. If I know I'm going in there and there's only 40 or 50 people, I'm going to be a little disappointed that you didn't go invite somebody. Probably next week after you're in the challenge, I'm going to give you an affiliate link so you can do what Amy did. Amy made $1,000 just bringing people into the challenge. Answer can if you like to make an extra $1,000 just for bringing people, entrepreneurs, business owners, real estate investors, agents, wholesalers, people you want to see do well. You know, don't bring your enemies into the challenge. Bring people you like. Bring people you want to see do well, you want to hang with. And this is how she did it. She said, I'm doing this 30-day challenge. I'm going to do this recession-proof challenge. Are you interested in joining me? I would never have done this Tough mutter stuff, this Rugged Maniac stuff, this Spartan Race stuff. If it wasn't for my brother texting me, be like, dude, I'm doing it. You coming in? Like, if he didn't say I'm doing it, I wouldn't have done it, right? So your success, your accepting this challenge and doing this challenge will ignite and light other people to finally get on track with their business, with their lives. We're going to build them systems. We're going to build them tools. And there's also going to be a competition for whoever makes the most, whoever invites uh, the most people in. Here's one of the, the guarantees I give you. Join the challenge. I'll make you that $97 back in 30 days. You'll have that money back. All you have to do is become an affiliate and bring one person in. And I don't take any of the money from the, the challenge. I give that all back to everybody who's brought it in. The reason I do that is because I've listened to the competitors Right? I've done everything in this wealth principle. I've listened to the competitors. I've listened to my customers. I've listened to the clients. I listen to influencers. I've go on social media. I see what other people are doing. And I recognize that sometimes you have to make it so juicy, so crazy, so exciting. And you do have to deliver on something so appealing that a person would be crazy, insane, unrealistic not to jump in on it. Recession proof is the people you spend your time with. It's not the asset class. It's not the business. 
It's how you show up and who you show up with. And this recession proof challenge is going to give you an army, a hundred people. Hands scare if you know you can take over anything with a hundred people, hundred people dedicated. This is more than a mastermind. This is like a hyper mastermind. This is a network of power. I'd have set it up in such a way that it can, uh, you can actually bring in 120 people if you're really ambitious and if you're already set up, but most people will not be as set up. There are a few of you I'm looking at. I know most of my millionaires are already set up to do this, but there is an opportunity for it to be actually 120 people. Michael Shine, every week, you and I, we have this little conversation about something powerful, a tool, a resource, so game-changing. There are 52 weeks in a year. There are 52 wealth principles. And we've also associated one powerful book that wraps all of those principles together into the context of its pages. We call that the book of the week. And Mike Shine, you are the holistic attorney, the closer, the keeper of the books. Let's give Mike Shine a big round of applause. What is this week's book of the week? So this is an exciting week because we have the author in residence right here. This is Quit Taking Your Own Bad Advice by Dr. Terry Wager and Christine McGinley. And geez, it's a little intimidating to do a review while he's on the, the thing. So I'm going to let Terry talk. But before I do that, I just want to say this book is about my takeaways is about sabotage, how you sabotage yourself from getting to the levels that we all want to get to. Um, it's about momentum. And it's like it says, we have a faulty filter system inside us. Okay. And we listen to it every day. And the irony is that we listen to it even when we know that it makes bad decisions sometimes. So this book is really great at pointing out that you need to get good coaches and go to like Terry's event in August, especially since it's in Providence, Rhode Island, right near all of you. you stop taking your own advice and you take the advice of people who've been there, who've coached, who know what they're doing. And it's it's a great, it's a great book. It's not that long, so you can bang through it. Quit taking your own bad advice by the Dr. Terry Wager. Yeah. Give Dr. Terry Wager a round of applause. Terry, share with us the inspiration behind the book. How'd you get here? The inspiration behind the book is me listening to my own bad advice. I mean, I listened to bad advice for years, uh, telling myself to buy things that I didn't need. And I still do that. Telling myself to follow things that don't work, but this time it'll work. And so one of the things that I know is I'm not the only person that does this stuff. We all do it, don't we? We all have these great ideas that make sense when we're thinking them, but when we take action on them, they don't work out the way we thought. And so we need to be able to look at ourselves and realize that, you know, mindset is only half the equation. I'm going to be talking about this at the boot camp quite a bit because a lot of times we focus on trying to build our mind and we try to really get our mind straight, but our emotions make our decisions. Every decision we make is an emotional decision. And so when we realize that our filter is clogged, our filter is broken, we have to really pay attention to the fact that we're always going to go towards that bad advice that gets us out of our pain. When we can realize that our filter is doing that, we don't have to take action the way we take action before. We can get suggestions from other people. We can get other people's perspectives. And if you've read my book, you know page 55 has a simple question in it that really helps you to see where your filter is doing what it does. And so I suggest strongly get in the book. It's on Amazon. And I think everybody here has a link to it. it it's it's very simple to read, like Mike said. And Mike, you did a great uh, review of the book. I, I really appreciate Thank what you. you said. Absolutely. It came from my 20 years of, of working with people with severely emotional disorders and things like that, as well as business owners who just are so focused on trying to get where they want to go that they forget where they're making their mistakes or they miss their mistakes because we all have blind spots. And what this book is really talking about is realizing that the filter creates blind spots. And the biggest blind spot that we have is that we don't think we're in a blind spot. And so when we can step back and go, wait a minute, where am I wrong? How am I making a mistake? And really tap into the brilliance of others we start to actually have success that we're looking for. Let's give Dr. Terry Wager a round of applause. The longer you tolerate what is not for you, the longer you postpone what is. Mm -hmm. Answer the camera if you recognize that as truth. You deserve the life that you want. You deserve the family you want, the people around you that you want. When I started building wealth back in 2015, when I went through the divorce, and I started from nothing and had to come back. I recognize something called, I call it lifestyle architecture. 
and I tried to buy the domain. Somebody's already got it. But lifestyle architecture was I can choose the people I spend my time with. I can choose new people based on new criteria. Are they in shape? Do they have great relationships with their spouses? Do they have great relationships with their kids? Are they thinking in a way that's normally positive? Are they financially successful? Are they in a business that I, I want to be in? Look at the people I hang out with. Look at the, the 72 people on this call right now. Some of you are new, but if you look at the people who have their cameras on, these are the people I chose to hang out with. These are these are the people I, I look up to as, hey, I could, if I'm in town, I'm going to spend time with you, right? Like I'm going to be at Generator Bootcamp next week. I believe it's next week. Yeah. So I'll be hanging out with every one of the people who are on this call who has been able to either fly in or is already in Rhode Island. That is a decision that took seven years to manifest because I took a little bit of time with it. Hence, Cam, if you've taken a little time with your manifestations and you know you could speed things up, this 30-day challenge is going to speed things up. You're going to get into high gear. So just be careful. Be careful with what you choose to decide your life is going to be. Be careful with what you say you want, because these next 30 days will reveal the path to get there. The people will be brought into your life. And so choose wisely. You've got a weekend <laughs> to make some decisions. You've got basically uh, 48 hours to decide who you want to be and how you want your life to be. And then we're going to commit and we're going to take the challenge and we're going to go through and put those people into your life. Hands to the camera if you're excited to live the next 30 days rebuilding the person you want to be. Awesome. I'm excited to be doing it with you. And for everybody who's going to be at Generator Business Bootcamp in Rhode Island at Providence, I'm excited to hang out with you in person. This is a powerful community. We are a powerful tribe. We care about each other. We do things morally, ethically, and legally. And I do want to open it up to questions. The Millionaire Path. Man, Millionaire Path. Just the coolest tool we've ever put together. You go to yourmillionairepath.com. It's not as pretty as the one that's on Alchemist Nation, but six questions, and it will identify a path to become a millionaire. It spits out a report, and it gives you a path to become a net worth millionaire. Mm -hmm.